Hare Krishna Archana. Hare Krishna Archana. Hare Krishna. Krishna Gurumani Nizaima. Hare Krishna Gurumani. Hare Krishna Guru Mani. Yes, yes. Okay, now I can hear you. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not able to get in touch with Archana. I think we'll just begin without her. She doesn't seem to be answering. I don't know where she's gone. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj. You're here. We can't hear, we, we can hear both you and Archana Madhuri. Yes. Yes. Oh, then shall we, Arshana Madhuri, can you hear us? Yes, yes, I can hear you very well. I can hear Guru Maharaj also, but he can't hear me. I can yes. hear you. Oh, now you can hear me. Okay, Guru Maharaj. I'm going to begin. Om Ajnana yes. Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. Vanchakaupa Tarubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhai Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare. We're, re we're reading the nectar of devotion and we're on chapter 2, which is entitled The First Stages of Devotion. So Rupa Goswami is describing to us what is the Initial stages of devotional service. And so the important item is that one should always follow the instructions of the spiritual teacher. And one should follow the scriptures, and one should follow the instructions of the saintly persons. So Srila Prabhupada was describing how there are four different ashrams and four different varnas. And it doesn't matter what position one is in, the regulative principles have to be followed by everyone. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner or if you're very advanced. Everyone follows the same principles, the same rules and regulations. So Srila Prabhupada explains that if this rule and regulation is followed, then all the other rules will also follow. 
ออได้มีการปฏิบัติตามกฎระเบียบเนี่ยกฎอื่นๆเนี่ยมันก็จะปฏิบัติตามมา The the first rule and regulation is that we should always remember Krishna. And if we do that, then all the other rules and regulations will also follow. So then. Rupa Goswami gives evidence to quote from the Srimad Bhagavatam from the eleventh canto, fifth chapter, verses two and three. And there, it's a conversation which took place between. Chama Samuni and Maharaj Nimi. So Chama Samuni is one of the nine Yogendras. Chama Samuni is one of the nine Yogendras. The nine Yogendras are great devotees. They travel throughout the universe preaching Krishna consciousness. So they came to the palace of Maharaj Nimi to give him instruction. Maharaj Nimi was a sincere devotee. He was very. He had many nice questions, and he was eager to get the association of these nine yogendras. So Chamasa Muni told the king. He told the king that the four different. So, social orders, the four different varnas, the Brahman, the Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sudra, they all come out of the different parts of the body of the universal form of the Lord. The Brahman has come out from the head. The Kshatriya has come from the arms. The Vaishya come from the waist. <coughs> And the Sudra has come out from the legs. And the same way, the sannyasis come out from the head. The vanaprastas come from the arms. The grihastas come from the waist. And the brahmacharis come from the legs. So people are classified into different positions according to their qualification. <coughs> So, in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna Himself said that He created these divisions in the society. And He created them according to their qualification. Not according to their birth, but according to their qualification. And 
So different parts of the body, they do different activities. In the same way, different different occupations and different ashrams, they have different duties. So although they have different duties, the purpose of their activities is always the same. It's to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As it, it is said in the Bhagavad Gita that Krishna is the supreme enjoyer. So it doesn't matter if you are a Brahmana or a Sudra. Our purpose must be to satisfy the Supreme Lord by our activities. And then there's a verse in Srimad Bhagavatam to support this. Everyone must be engaged in his particular duty. But the perfection of doing our duty is how much we have satisfied the Supreme Lord. So if everybody has a different position, somebody's a Brahmana, someone's a Sudra, someone's a Sannyasi, someone's a, a Grihastha, they're different duties. So everyone has to act according to the position they're in. And their activities must be pleasing to the Supreme Personality of Godhead or else they will fall down from their position. For example, a Brahmana, a Brahmana is born from the head of the Supreme Lord. But the duty of the Brahmana is to preach the, 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 the teachings of the, the scriptures, and particularly the, the Vedic teachings. In Sanskrit, the teaching, teaching of the scriptures is called Shabda Brahman, it's transcendental sound, spiritual sound vibration. So, because the Brahmana, he's, he's come from the head of the body, so he represents the head of the social body, of the society. Brahmanas are like the head in the social body. And when the Brahmana eats, he will, he will eat food on behalf of the Supreme Lord. So there's a Vedic injunction, it says that when a Brahmana eats, it, we should understand that the Personality of Godhead is eating through him. Uh, 
But Prabhupada then makes the point, he said, the, the brahmana's business is not just to eat, but he also has to preach. He will preach the message of the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, and he will preach to the whole world. And in the Bhagavad Gita, in the 18th chapter, Lord Krishna said, if one is preaching the message of Bhagavad Gita, then he is very, very dear to Lord Krishna. And anybody who is preaching this message of the scriptures, then he is actually a Brahmana. And if, and if you feed that person, it's as good as feeding the Supreme Lord directly. The Brahmanas are so dear to Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna likes cows and he likes Brahmanas. Lord Krishna in Vrindavan, he has one Brahmana friend, Madhu Mangal. Madhu Mangal, we, oft, we often show him to be a little small and a little fat. Madhu Mangal, He's a little fat because he's a Brahmana and the people like to feed Brahmanas because they know they get a lot of blessings when they feed the Brahmanas. <coughs> Just like <coughs> devotees, <coughs> people like to feed devotees, they always like to give them food. <coughs> Because they know that when they're feeding the devotees, they're giving the they're getting rid of their karma to the, the devotees. So a devotee is very careful about where he about from whom he will take food from. And Prabhupada told devotees, you should not take any food, for, any cooked food from people who are not vegetarian. And Prabhupada, Prabhupada, one time in London, I remember there was one man, he came, and he asked Prabhupada to come to his home. So Prabhupada, so Prabhupada asked the man, do you eat meat there? And the man said, well, yes, sometimes. So then Prabhupada said, then I will not come to your home. So the man was quite affected. He was, he was so shocked when Prabhupada said that. And he thought about it and then he decided he went home. He made his home vegetarian. Wow, 
But Prabhupada was very concerned about devotees because he knew people would be wanting to give devotees food and to feed them and to feed them grains and he knew that by giving them grains then they w the devotees would be taking their karma. And Prabhupada also did not like us to take any food in the airplanes. He said the airplane food is not pure food. It's not going to be good for you to eat. There's going to be karma there. Don't eat the food they give you in the airplane. And Prabhupada said, when Prabhupada would take on the airplane, Prabhupada would bring his own food with him to eat in the airplane. And we, we can also tell people, just give me some fruit. But when they give fruit, we should tell them, just give me the fruit before you cut it, uncut fruit. <laughs> Prabhupada said, if they cut it, they'll use a knife. Maybe they'll use the same knife which they used to cut meat. So he said, don't let them cut any fruit for you. Just take the fruit uncut and you can always wash it and cut it yourself. <laughs> So these are some important principles to remember. So to be a to be a devotee it's a responsibility responsibility which we have. Generally, devotees, we don't like to go out to eat in restaurants. And, and Prabhupada would tell us in Mayapur, when devotees would come from the West, they'd come to India and they would want to go out to eat. And Prabhupada would tell them, don't eat in the restaurants. Often we find in the restaurants that people are not devotees and they're not vegetarians even. And so the food will have karma. So then, after describing about the Brahmana, then Prabhupada describes about the Kshatriya and the duty of the Kshatriya. And the Kshatriya, Prabhupada said, his duty is to protect the people. And we have to, the, the Kshatriya has to protect them from, from Maya. So when the Kshatriya kings in the past, like great kings like Maharaj Yudhisthir, Maharaj Parikshit, they would make sure everyone did their duty according to their position in the Varnashram. And so Prabhupada said, 
as, as when Maharaj Pariksit, when he was touring his kingdom one time, he, saw, he found there was a black man who was attempting to kill a cow. So this man was dressed like a king and he was, he was going to kill a cow. This man, his name was actually Kali. So this man was the personality of Kali and he was coming to, in, to bring Kali Yuga into the planet, onto the planet Earth. So when Maharaj Parikshit saw him, Maharaj Parikshit took his sword and he was going to kill that man. He was shocked to see that anybody in his kingdom could do harm to a cow. So this is the duty of the Kshatriya. They have to protect not only the people, they have to protect the animals, especially the cow. So in, in order in order to give protection, they will they will often use violence in order to protect the, the people and the cows. So violence can be used in the service of Krishna. And we, we see in the Bhagavad Gita that Krishna is instructing Arjuna to fight on the battle of Kurukshetra. Krishna wants, Krishna wants Arjuna to fight in order to give protection to the people. So this is the duty, this is one of the main duties of the Kshatriyas that they have to protect people under their care. So there's a cooperation between the Brahmanas and the Kshatriyas. The Brahmanas, they will give the knowledge to the Kshatriyas and the Kshatriyas, they will protect the Brahmins. So when there's cooperation between the different occupations and the different ashrams, then the society will flourish and everyone will be happy. But we see in the history of the world that the Varnashram system fell apart. It failed because people became uh, they took it, they became prejudiced. They, they thought, the Brahmana thought, I am high class and others are low class. So as soon as someone thinks, I'm better than others, 
then there will be a problem in the world. If the Brahmana thinks I am high class and he thinks the Sudra is low class, then this is not good. So in the body, all the parts of the body are important. The head is important, but the legs are also important. And the arms are also important, and the stomach is also important. So we have to appreciate all the different parts of the body. In the same way, we have to appreciate all the different parts of the society, the Sudra, the Vaishya, the Kshatriya and the Brahmins. So we heard about the Brahmana and the Kshatriya, now Prabhupada is telling us about the Vaishya. He said the Vaishyas are meant for producing food. So you cannot produce food in the factory. You have to go farming, you have to work on the land to produce food. What is wrong with your microphone? I got a call, Gumarash. I already ended it. Now it's okay? Yes. So... <clears throat> So the Vaishyas not only produce food, they also can sell the food, they can distribute the food. And then the Sudras, they are the working class and they will do all the labouring work because they don't have the, the kind of good intelligence like the Brahmana or the Kshatriya or the Vaishya, but they, they can follow orders. You tell them what to do, they'll do it. So the, the Sudra's duty is to help the Vaishya or to help the Kshatriya, or to help the Brahman. And they'll help them by doing different services in their homes, or taking maybe like uh, cooking, not cooking, but uh, cleaning their home and uh, doing the, washing their cloth and uh, carrying things for them and working in the fields. And they're meant, everybody's meant to work together to help each other to make spiritual advancement and also material advancement. So, 
bless you in word truth. Everybody has to take care of their material needs. They have to have food to eat. They need homes to live in. And they need clothes to wear, these different things. So uh, they help each other to take care of their different needs. Yeah. So the, the Sudra people, the working people, if they're given good food and if they're given nice cloth to wear and they have a place to live, then they're happy. They don't need anything more. And we see sometimes when you give money to the working people, to the Sudra people, they will use it to gamble and they will use it to take intoxication they will do bad things with it. So the main thing is to give people nice food and clothes and a place to live. So people should cooperate together to help each other and work together and appreciate each other. They should think everyone is important. They shouldn't discriminate against people. And if, if we don't cooperate together, then Prabhupada said, then we will fall down. And this is the problem and now in the Kali Yuga at the present time, because Kali Yuga means the age of quarrel. People don't want to do their duty and people become proud. Somebody calls himself a brahmana. And because he's a brahmana, he thinks I'm an intellectual, and somebody else is a Kshatriya, he's a soldier or a politician. So the, the problem is people think like that, they think I'm a Brahmin or I'm a Kshatriya, they're, they're not thinking about their spiritual position, that they're actually spirit souls. <coughs> so they're, they're not Krishna conscious. And because they're not Krishna conscious, everything is a failure. So the Krishna Consciousness Movement is to try to bring people into proper consciousness, to get them all to work together and to help each other and to be happy. And just like we said, the, the brahmanas giving knowledge to the kshatriya and the kshatriya is protecting the brahmanas. 
การที่พวกบรามนะหรือพวกพามเนี่ยไม่ให้ความปกป้องคุ้มครองกับพวกคาเชติยาและไม่ให้ความรู้กับพวกคาเชติยาและคาเชติยาไม่ให้ความคุ้มครองกับพวกบรามนะ And the the Vaishya, his job is to produce the food and to take care of the cows and to trade and buy and sell the food. And the Sudra's job is to work to help all the other people. Okay, so Rupa Goswami is giving evidence, and now there's another example given. This is about Lord Krishna instructing Uddhava. <coughs> so Lord Krishna instructs Uddhava that if you follow the The duties, the rules of the different varnas and ashrams, then you can satisfy Krishna. And when you satisfy Krishna, then everyone gets the benefit of life. Everyone will be happy, but there will be no problems. It's actually Krishna who is maintaining all the living entities. So if everyone does their duty. And at the same time, becomes Krishna conscious, then there'll be no problem. Everyone will have their basic needs, and they'll be peaceful, and they'll be happy. And the, the, you can see that if everyone has the basic needs and they're happy, then the world will become like the spiritual world. This world will become like Vaikuntha. We don't, we don't have to wait till we die to go to Vaikuntha. We can make this world Vaikuntha now. We have to follow the the teachings of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And we have to do our duties according to our different position and varna and ashrams. So there's a statement where Lord Krishna says to Uddhava in the eleventh canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, twenty seventh chapter, forty ninth verse. Krishna says to Uddhava. He said, "My dear Uddhava, everyone is engaged in activities." <coughs> Some people follow the scriptures and some don't. They just do ordinary material activities. But Krishna said, "It doesn't matter." He said, "Even they do ordinary activities, if they worship me and Krishna consciousness, 
then they will become very happy. They will be happy in this world and in the next world also. So if everyone does Krishna conscious activities, everyone will be happy. So Prabhupada said, Krishna consciousness is so nice, there is no need to call people. We don't call people Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sudra. We don't call people Brahmacharyas, Tavanaprasanyas. Prabhupada said, this, this is all external, this is material. But everyone is, should be devotee. Just like <clears throat> before we do our tea, we offer a prayer to the we offer a prayer to Krishna. We pray that I am not a Brahman or a Kshatriya or a Vaishya or a Sudra. And I am not a sannyasi or a vanaprastha or a grihastha or a brahmachari. But I am simply the servant of the servant of the servant of the Supreme Lord who pleases all the gopis. <laughs> So when we offer our tea, before offering our tea, we should make That is actually Krishna consciousness, to meditate on being the servant of Krishna. We may think, oh, I'm a brahmana, I'm offering arti. That, that is material. <coughs> so everyone should do whatever service he can for Krishna. And he should offer the result of his activities to Krishna. So when we work for Krishna, then everybody will be happy and peaceful. So then just to finish the chapter, there's one more quotation from the Narada Pancharatra. Describes the regulative principles of devotional service. So in that book it says, any activities which are in the scriptures and which are done for the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord, then they are accepted by the teachers as the regulative principles of devotional service. So, 
พอพระทยัยครูผู้สอนซึ่งเป็นนักบุญจะยอมรับว่าเป็นหลักธรรมแห่งการรักษาตนในสลาลักไทย So if we if we are very regular means every day if we do our service for Krishna under the direction of the spiritual teacher, then gradually we'll come to the platform of serving Krishna in pure love of God. <laughs> เวลาเราได้ปฏิบัติอย่างสม่ำเสมอภายใต้คำแนะนำของพระอาจารย์เนี่ยเราจะค่อยๆพัฒนามาถึงระดับแห่งการรับใช้ของพระกวางด้วยใจหลังที่บริบูรณ์ so the the goal of life is to develop love of God จุดมุ่งหมายของชีวิตก็คือการพัฒนาความรักต่อของพระกวาง and every anyone can develop love of God It doesn't matter if you're a brahmana or a sudra Everyone can develop love for God. We tell there are many stories about sometimes the brahmana becomes very proud. Just like we tell the story about the cobbler and the brahmana. So to be a cobbler, to be touching people's shoes and repairing people's shoes, is considered a very low. Profession, very, you know, not very high position in society. การที่เป็นคนที่มีหน้าที่ในการที่ล้างรองเท้าทำความสะอาดรองเท้าเนี่ยสำหรับบุคคลนั้นเนี่ยได้ได้ได้รับตำแหน่งสูงส่งอะไรมากนักทางสังคม And the brahmana, somebody's a brahmana. They're the head, so they're thinking here the, the best person in the society, at the top of the society. <coughs> so it happened that one time Narada Muni was going to go to the spiritual world to see Lord Narayan. And so when when the brahmana heard, then he was he said to Narada Muni, he said, "Oh, when you go there, ask Lord Narayan, am I coming back to the spiritual world next life?" So uh, the, the cobbler somehow the cobbler also heard that Narada Muni was going to the spiritual world, and the cobbler also was a nice devotee, and the cobbler asked Narada Muni, "Oh, please ask Lord Narayan." How many births will I have to take before I can come back to the spiritual world? So. The the Brahmana laughed. He thought, "Oh, you cobbler! How will you go back to the spiritual world?" First, you should become a Brahmana, and then when you're a Brahmana, then you can go back to the spiritual world. So Narada Muni said, "Okay, I will ask him when I go there." 
So Narada Muni went to Vaikuntha and he met Lord Narayan. And so he, Lord Narada Muni said to Lord Narayan, I met your two devotees. There's a, a Brahmana and a cobbler. And Lord Narayan said, oh, yes, yes, I know those two. And Narada Muni was a little surprised. He thought, oh, Lord Narayan, he knows these two devotees. So, uh, Narada Muni asked Lord Narayan, he said, they both want to know when they're coming, when, how many more births they'll have to take before they come back to the spiritual world. So Lord Narayan said, well, he said, you, that Brahmana, he will have to take birth many times before he will come back to the spiritual world. And he said, the cobbler, he's coming back to Godhead in the very next birth. So Narada Muni came back to earth. And he went to see the Brahmana, and the Brahmana said, Oh, Narada Muni, you've come back from the spiritual world. Did you meet Lord Narayan? <coughs> and Narada Muni said, Yes, I did. I met him. And uh, The Brahmana said, well, did Lord Narayan know me? Is, am I coming back to Godhead in the next birth? But Narada Muni said, no. He said, Lord Narayan said, you're, you're not coming back. You, you have to take birth many times before you will come back to Godhead. So the Brahmana became angry when he heard this. He said, what? He said, I'm a Brahmana. I should go back in the next life. And he said to the Brahmana, he said, if you, he said to Narada Muni, the Brahmana said to Narada Muni, if you really saw Lord Narayan, what was he doing there when you saw him? So Lord Narayan had already told Narada Muni, he said, when you meet them, you tell them, that I was threading an elephant through the eye of a needle. And so when the Brahmana heard that Lord Narayan was threading an elephant through the eye of a needle. He, he thought, oh, he, this ridiculous nonsense. He said, I know you, now I know you didn't go to Vaikuntha, you didn't really meet Lord Narayan. Uh, 
ไม่จริงละเธอเนี่ยไม่ได้ไปหาพนารายมาแน่เลยเธอมั่ว I need to t u r n her the money. Don't waste my time. Get away from here. Leave me alone. And then he went to see the cobbler, and the cobbler is very happy to see Narada Muni, and he asked Narada Muni, "How is Lord Narain? How is everything?" And then the cobbler asked, "What did Lord Narain say? How many more births have have I got to take before I will go back to Godhead?" And Narada Muni told him, "Oh, Lord Narain said, 'Very next birth you're going back to Godhead.'" So when the cobbler heard this, he said, "Oh, Lord Narayan is so merciful. He's so kind." So then the the cobbler asked Narada Muni, "Please tell me what was Nar Lord Narayan doing when you saw him in the spiritual world?" And Narada Muni said, "Oh, he was threading an elephant through the eye of a needle." So when the Brahmana heard this, he said, "Oh, how wonderful Lord Narayan is!" <laughs> so Narada Muni was surprised. He said, "Are you not surprised that Lord Narayan could do this?" But the cobbler said no. He said why? He said look. He said see that banyan tree. He said the banyan tree, huge banyan tree. It came from one tiny seed. And that one tree is producing many seeds, and each of the seeds they can produce a big tree. So Lord Narayan is so wonderful. He can do so many wonderful things. So the Brahmana could understand how Lord Krishna has inconceivable energies. But the Brahmana, he couldn't. The Brahmana is going back. The Brahmana is not going back to Godhead, but the cobbler is going back to. Brahmana, yeah, may I come back to the house? But the person who came from the house may come back to the house. Mhm. Okay, we'll stop now. Okay. Okay, we'll just come and divide. Just only who has any questions. Yuvati Sachi has a question. Yuvati Sachi, I cannot hear you. Hari Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. 
Гуру Махарадж, in one hour lectures, nectar of devotion, on nectar of devotion lectures, uh, we told about the mood uh, in which one uh, should enter the holy dham. And uh, in this regard, in what mood uh, should we leave the material world? Well, when you leave the material world, you should think you're leaving for your real home, you're going back home, back to the spiritual world. Just like if someone is put into prison, and so they have to stay in prison for some time, but then when they get out of prison, it's a great relief to get out of the prison. They don't want to go back in the prison. So the same way, we leave the material world. You can think of the material world like a prison house. So we feel very glad to get away from it. But there are other devotees, different devotees may see no difference between the material world and the spiritual world. They may see everywhere there is Krishna. Just like Prabhupada went to Vrind he was in America, but he said, I'm always in Vrindavan because I'm always thinking of Krishna. And it is also said, if one takes the shelter of the Supreme Lord, there's no difference between heaven and hell and liberation. Every, everywhere he sees the opportunity to do devotion of service. He sees everything as Krishna's energy and everywhere there's opportunity to do service for Krishna. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. It's clear now. All right, Shaya has a, a question. Um, อาจารย์นะคะแต่ให้พี่หน่อยนะคะเอ่อคําถามของพี่อ่ะค่ะเป็นเรื่องราวลีลาที่ตอนที่เอ่อเจ้าปฏิอ่ะค่ะโดนเ
แบบแพ้พนันเมียคือเอาเมียเป็นพนันด้วยจนก็แพ้เสียเมียไปแล้วจริง They because they were k s h a t r i y a s and they were challenged to gamble and they cannot refuse and so then they were gambling different things then it came to the point you can gamble your wife and so they gambled their wife and they lost their wife so after they lost their wife they cannot protect her. เพราะว่าเขาเนี่ยเป็นจัตสัตว์แล้วเขาก็โดนท้าให้เล่นการพนันแล้วเขาเละท้าให้เล่นการพนันแล้วกษัตริย์เนี่ยจะไม่สามารถที่จะปฏิเสธคำท้าได้แล้วก็เขาก็ในการพนันเขาก็ท้าให้เอาภรรยาเนี่ยมาพนันด้วยพอภรรยามาพนันเนี่ยเขาก็แพ้การพนันก็แพ้เท่ากับสูญเสียภรรยาไป They wanted to go to protect her, but Maharaj Yudhisthira stopped them. Because Maharaj Yudhisthira is the personification of religion, and according to religious codes, they'd already lost their wife in the gambling match, so they had no right to protect her. The ความจริงเนี่ยเขาก็จะแบบว่าทนกันไม่ไหวจนจะออกไปช่วยโดยปกติแล้วแต่ว่าเนื่องจากเอ่อแต่ว่ามาราชยูดิสตีเนี่ยหยุดพวกเขาไว้เพราะว่าท่านเนี่ยเป็นตัวแทนของศาสนาเป็นตัวแทนของแบบว่าหลักธรรมเพราะฉะนั้นท่านบอกว่าตามหลักธรรมแล้วเนี่ยเราได้แพ้พนันภรรยาของเราไปแล้วนั่นก็หมายความว่าเราได้เสียนานไปแล้ว But when when they saw how they were treating Draupadi at that time Bima made vows that he would get revenge for what they had done to Draupadi แล้วก็ตอนนั้นเนี่ยก็บีมาเนี่ยก็ด้วยความโกรธเนี่ยก็เลยทำแบบว่าถือสักปฏิญาณว่าจะแก้แค้นให้โดยปฏิญาณอย่างไร Duryodhan had told Draupadi come and sit on my lap you can sit on my thigh you're just right to sit here on my thigh so Bima became very angry he said I will break that thigh แล้วก็เดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวนะก็จะบอกว่ามามาสีโดปตีมานั่งบนตักของข้าก็เธอเนี่ยเหมาะในการนั่งตักของข้ามาแต่ในด้วยความด้วยความโกรธและโมโหเนี่ยเออบีมาก็บอกว่าเดี๋ยวข้านี่แหละจะจะทำลายตักนั้น So it happened at the end of the battle of Kurukshetra Bima thought fought with Duryodhan and he broke that thigh And then there was this one man, Dusha San. He he untied the hair of Drupadi. Then. So that was a great offense to touch a woman's hair and to untie it, and Draupadi vowed that she would not tie her hair again until she got the blood from that person to wash her hair. And then Draupadi got so sick, he felt so angry, so much, and he said, "The king will not have a day when he will tie the hair again." อาจจะไม่วันที่จะมัดผมถ้าเกิดว่าไม่มีอกจากเลือดของดุสาสันเนี่ยมาล้าง So during the battle of Kurukshetra, Bima killed that man, and he ripped out his heart, and he brought the blood to Draupadi, and she put it on her hair, and then she tied her hair again. แล้วก็ในในสงครามเนี่ยก็บีมาก็ได้สังหารคนนั้นดูซาตันจริงๆแล้วก็เอาเลือดอกของเขาเนี่ยมาให้ดูปฏิสับผม So they took revenge for the treatment of Drupadi. เขาเป็นการแก้แค้นให้สำหรับการกระทำพฤติกรรมแบบนั้นที่มีตอนดูปฏิ Actually, it's an, a wonderful pastime because the, the way they were treating Draupadi was so bad, but it shows that Draupadi was so surrendered to Krishna that Krishna protected her. And then, it's a l i t t l ที่ทำให้เราเข้าใจว่า
พวกเขาเนี่ยมีการกระทําต่อโดยปกติที่ไม่ดีมากแต่พวกแต่ว่าโดยปกติเนี่ยขอความช่วยเหลือจากคริสนาและคริสนาก็ให้การปกป้องคุ้มครองกับเรา So Krishna takes care; he protects his devotees. Krishna is our ruler. Lack of p r o t e c t i s a o n Even you have five husbands, like the Pandavas, they may not be able to protect you. But if you take shelter of Krishna, Krishna can protect you. Ah, ถึงแม้เราจะมีสามีห้าคนแบบพันธุ์เดียวก็จะปกป้องคุ้มครองเราไม่ได้ถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยอ่า Okay. Um, yes, Guru Maharaj. I have um some question more. Um, อาจารย์คะแปลนิดหน่อยค่ะคือเอ่อเหตุการณ์เนี้ยเป็นเพราะว่าเหมือนว่าเราปานดาว่าเนี้ยตกอยู่ในมายาหรือเปล่าคะมันก็เลยเหมือนเกิดดีลานี้ขึ้นมาทําให้เขาเนี้ยไม่สามารถที่จะปกป้องภรรยาได้เพราะว่าเสียพนันอะไรอย่างเงี้ยค่ะ Uh, her question is: Is that because they are influenced by Maya, that's why they can't protect his wife, their wife like that? Uh, well, I explained to you everything. I told you Maharaj Yudhisthira wouldn't let them go to protect her. ไม่ใช่ตกอยู่ในมายาค่ะแต่ว่ามันเป็นสถานการณ์ที่เขาแพ้พนันแล้วเขาก็เกิดเหตุการณ์อย่างนั้นขึ้นแต่ว่าพวกเขาเนี่ยไม่สามารถที่จะช่วยสามีได้เนื่องจากว่ามหาราชยูดิสทีเนี่ยห้ามไว้ว่าตามหลักธรรมแล้วเนี่ยถ้าแพ้พนันแล้วก็คือแพ้เลยยังไงเราก็ต้องรับพนันไว้อีกรูมาราได้อธิบายไปแล้ว I would prefer you ask questions about what we talk about in the class. You bring up a whole other topic which we never even touched in the class. Okay, Guru Maharaj, I understand. Thank you for your explanation, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Vaishnavivani. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance. All glory to Sri Lal Prabhupada. Uh, so, in this class, Rupa Goswami says the regulative principles apply to all the four varnas. Uh, the even the Shatriyas and Sudras, all of them have to follow the regulative principles. Because sometimes they say like uh, we are Shatriyas, we don't have to follow the need uh, for regulative principles. Uh, is it correct, Guru Maharaj? Yes. Uh, but sometimes we say we don't have to follow regular principles. Yeah, because they are shatriyas, they can. They are allowed to eat uh, uh, meat or sutras. They don't have to follow like uh, the four regulatory principles. No, It's not uh, their. But, but if they're devotees, they will follow. Just like there's people like uh, uh, Ranti Dev. Ranti Dev was a shatriya, but he didn't eat meat. He was always vegetarian. Yeah. So it will vary. It will vary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are there are shatriyas who are very strict who don't eat meat, even other shatriyas. Okay, Guru Maharaj, a bit confused now. But they, according to their varna, they they are sometimes given the permission to not like the brahmanas to give up the regulatory <coughs> principles. Well, if they do, then they have to suffer karma for it. For it, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Good marriage. Uh -huh. I get it. Yeah. And one more thing, they are telling here the brahmanas are coming out of the head of the supreme lord. It's a just an imaginary version, right, Guru Maharaj? This. Uh, well, the the universal. The brahmanas represent the head of the social body, just like the brain. The brahmanas are meant to guide people. They they have the intelligence, so they're meant to guide people for material and spiritual benefit. Okay. The brain is in the head, so the brahmanas coming from the head. It's like the brain of the body. Okay. Okay. Good m a r r i a g e Yeah. 
Sometimes in an, another place Prabhupada said brahmanas are like the heart. <laughs> There's a book I was reading, Srimad Bhagavatam, Prabhupada said the brahmanas are the heart and the kshatriyas are the body. But generally, as it said here, the brahmanas come out of the head because they, re they have the brain, they have the intelligence, they're meant to guide the people. Okay, yeah. Yes, Guru Maharaj. It's very clear now. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. And then, Sri Devi Gorangi. Sri Devi Gorangi has a question. Mute, unmute myself. Yeah, already, already. I'm unable to unmute myself. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Just now, our Guru Maharaj in the class, and as you usually say, you're supposed to offer the results of our activities to Krishna. But usually when somebody falls critically ill, the devotees usually say, may the results of today's chanting go to the person who is sick or very critically ill. So may I have clarification, Guru Maharaj, on this? Well, that's the mercy of a devotee if they want to give the results of their chanting to somebody else in their heart they can pray like that they can ask that their chanting can go for the benefit of some other soul that's the compassion of a devotee that they care about others and they're willing to sacrifice the results of their own service for the benefit of others So it is, it is correct to pray like that when somebody is, is ill, Guru Maharaj, we, we can pray like that, we can say like that. Yeah, you can do it, yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Okay, any questions in the Chinese chat there? Mm, no, nothing from Chinese to Guru Maharaj. Krishna, your Wenti. Your Wenti, huh? Uh,古玛拉,呃,是这样的,就是,今天我们讲到了,嗯,就是我,我们在旅行,不同,在不同的那个,玩了沙马之度当中,旅行自己的,职责,然后保持亏心的直觉,那么,就能过上平和,快
And if Krishna wants to take us back to Godhead, he will arrange it. A devotee will go wherever Krishna wants him. Wherever Krishna wants that devotee to go for service, the devotee is ready to go. So devotees just simply depend on Krishna. Wherever Krishna puts us, we're going to serve Krishna. Yeah, we said there's no difference between heaven and hell and liberation. It's all the same for a devotee. He just wants to serve Krishna. Okay. 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 <coughs> so she's asking that somebody may be doing devotional service and they may not have so much faith in the order of the spiritual master and they have some doubt about the the orders of the spiritual master. And so what position are they in? Is that pure devotional? Can that be pure devotional service? Mm. Well, they have to have faith in the spiritual master. That's very important. It's, if they don't have the faith in the spiritual master, then how, they cannot be doing pure devotional service. If they don't have faith in the spiritual master, then they're not really qualified to be disciples. And so it's important for people, before they become a, a, a disciple, they must have faith in the instructions of the teacher. And that's why before people get initiation, they have to follow strictly for a, about one year before they get the initiation. And they have to hear regularly from the spiritual teacher and then they have to inquire from him. And they should inquire about the, th the subject matter which the spiritual teacher is explaining. So it, it's important the, the relationship between the spiritual teacher and the disciple. Mm. 
there has to be that confidence, that trust between both the, the, the teacher trusts the student and the student trusts the teacher. So when there's that trust, then the teacher and the student, they can have a very nice relationship. But if there are doubts, oh, there's doubts, or there's, you don't have the, the person doesn't have the trust, they don't feel the faith so much, in the, then, then it's not a good relationship. Yeah. Is there an Hayo Bedawenti? Sati? <laughs> How long does it take someone to come to the position of spontaneous or Raganuga Bhakti? Well, it's going to depend on the person. Somebody may have been a devotee in their previous lives. So if you've already been practicing devotional service in your previous life, then maybe you can come quicker to Raganuga Bhakti. But if we are beginning Bhakti in this lifetime, then it will take take some time. It's not an easy thing. But, but even we're doing Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, you can still be the pure devotee. There are pure devotees also who do Vaidhi Bhakti. They're great devotees. It's, don't think it's don't think that you have to become a Raganuga devotee. It's not necessary. But generally, generally it takes a long time to come to that position. And you have to be guided. You have to be uh, recognized by other devotees that they will agree that, yes, all right, you're qualified, now you can do that Raganuga Bhakti. Okay, Hayo Yiga Venti Sati. Oh, Sati? Yeah, okay. When we understand our spiritual duty, do we still have our material duties? Yes, yes, you do. Just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, 
you know, he had his material duty as a sannyasi, but at the same time he was in his spiritual duty, as, uh, in the mood of the gopis. So we do, we have both material and spiritual duties. We don't give up material duties just to go on the spiritual. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, we're finished here now, Arjuna. Okay, we're not. Okay, thank thanks. You. Thanks, Arjuna, and thanks. Evening. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. Gurmash Ki Jai. Gurmash Ki Jai.